Hey YouTube, it's your girl Chimaka, and I wanted to come on here and share my testimony slash my story. I've been feeling led to do this. I feel like I've been on YouTube several times, um, kind of just doing different things, making vlogs, like college vlogs when I was in college, and bedroom tours, and just kind of videos that I felt like weren't God-led and more self-led. Um, but I know that I've been called to speak on my life, speak about what I've been through. And um, I guess today is a day where I decided to go ahead and make this testimony video about my life. So basically, I guess I can just go ahead and start. I don't know if I need to have like an intro, but um, I have been saved for, I got saved my freshman year in college. But let me just go ahead and backtrack to the beginning of, not my life, but just kind of like the whole, I don't really have the story down, y'all. I'm just kind of going, like I'm literally going off a whim. So excuse me if I kind of sound scattered brained or like flustered or I don't know what I'm trying to say. Um, yeah, just give me that grace, y'all. Anyway, so basically, um, ever since I was young, I've always kind of felt like different from everybody. I always felt like I didn't fit in. I didn't really ever fit in just with the fact that um, I grew up in many different areas of my life. I grew up in Dallas and I moved around a lot, but I always just felt different. I never felt like I fit, uh, I fit in. Um, I would see other girls with their little girlfriend groups and people just had their friends and I had friends but I never had like my girl group or like my group of friends right and um, I kind of was like friends with everybody from each group so and it wasn't even like that close friendship or relationship with these people it was just kind of like oh you know you know when you're in school you're just kind of friends with these people and that's just kind of how it always been for me, even up until college. Like, I just kind of always was friends with everybody, but I never really had my group. So, yeah, I always felt kind of outcasted, felt like I was different. And even just growing up, like, my name is different. My name is Chiamaka. Chiamaka with the accents. But Chiamaka is my name. And um, I really actually was very ashamed of my name. I hated my name. People um, used to make fun of me with my name um, I would hate roll call because they would say or butcher my name and say all types of different names that didn't even resemble at least the letters that were in my name so I would get made fun of people would try to call me Chewbacca my last name is Duru so they would be like Dudu and it's like come on now you know but at that time, I took that very personally, and I felt like I was not good enough. I felt like I was, my name was ugly. I felt like my name had no meaning. I felt like my name was not like the simpler names like Sarah and Mike and, you know, and I just felt like, dang, like, why did I get this difficult name? So I had a best friend, I guess, in middle school, and her name was Kiki. So I was like, okay, well, I'm going to go by CC. And... Growing up, that's just kind of when I went by it was CC. I actually was going by Jessica, which is my middle name, but I didn't like that name because it was like a white name, and I grew up around black people, so you know, I was like I have to have some something that kind of resembled everybody else's name. So I was like, okay, CC, I'm gonna go by CC, and I, I I went by that name, and I still have some people that do call me CC, but. I don't want to go by that name no more. I feel like that's not who I am. I actually have a blog post about my name and I'll link that below so you guys can read it. But I went by CC and I feel like CC is a different person in comparison to Chamaka. Chamaka, however you guys want to say it. Um, I feel like CC was lost. CC didn't know herself. CC didn't have self worth or confidence, Cece was a people pleaser. Cece wanted to make sure everybody was happy before she was happy. Um, Cece allowed people to talk about her or talk um, to her in a crazy way. Um, she allowed people to talk over her when she wanted to speak. 
um, because of sh the people pleasing of, okay, well, I'm gonna just let them speak. It's okay, I'll just be quiet. Like, no, if I have something to say, I'll say. Um, she would allow people to belittle her. She would feel like she wasn't good enough. Cece was, she had a lot of so low self-worth, low self-confidence. She didn't know herself. And I know I've already said all these, but I'm just kind of like reiterating, like, this is who Cece was. She, because of going through all that, of being bullied and being the outcast and being less than and being, or feeling less than and feeling like she wasn't good enough and being treated uh, wrong and mishandled by many people, boyfriends, um, she became a B word. I'm not even gonna say because I'm not trying to cuss, but she came a B and it's like, she took on this personality of ain't nobody gonna cross me, ain't nobody gonna do me the way people have been doing me. And started talking back, started talking rude, talking reckless, fighting, just doing things that was never really who Chiamaka was, right? So, um, yeah, I just became this ugly person and at, in that moment, I was like, oh, yeah, this is who I really am. Like, I'm I'm a hard, this person, I'm going to fight anybody who tries to disrespect me. Like, that's not who, that's not who God called me to be. That's not who I am. That's not who God called me to be. So I was doing that for several years, and I realized that I was just becoming more sad. And notice that, pe notice that people who are bullies, that are angry, that are always coming for people, they're typically sad inside. Something deep down inside is wrong with them. And I realized that I would always be falling into some kind of depression. I was very anxious a lot. I was sad most of the time. And I was like, what, why? Like, I don't understand why I'm going through all of these things deep down inside. Like, I was just really sad, really broken, really hurt. And I didn't realize it was all the pain that I carried from my childhood and middle school and high school and even parts of college too. So I, I know I struggled with depression since I was like 13 years old, um, suicidal ideation and thoughts since I was about 13 years old, probably even sooner than that, honestly. But I remember at that time was whenever I started having those um, thoughts continuously and consistently or consistently. So, um, so yeah, that was basically kind of like the journey when, when it came to like people in general. I was bullied, made fun of, um, didn't really know who I was because I allowed people to tell me who I was, um, didn't have any confidence, didn't have any self-worth, didn't know who I was, lost, naive, just everything, like that was CC, right? Then continuing on, I went out to, or before I even went out to college, I met this dude, and um, and I feel like me talking about my relationships in this part of the video kind of leads into why I know God has called me to be speaking to women about relationships and life and all of that, but specifically relationships. When I met this dude, and um, so this wasn't like my first, first boyfriend. I actually had another boyfriend that lasted just like three months. It wasn't even really like, I don't even count that relationship because of how long it lasted. But I mean, that can be talked about too because I was rejected in that relationship and I didn't even realize that I had daddy issues and all these issues when it came to men. I would chase after, after dudes. I would beg for their love. and. The only love that I need to be chasing after was God's love. And in that, you don't even chase after his love because his love is already freely given to you. But not having a relationship with dad really affected the way I viewed men and relationships. So um, that relationship was like my junior year of high school where um, we were like talking for like two weeks and then he just disappeared. So I would text him, blow up his phone, like, hey, where you at? Come on, like, I wanna talk to you, I miss you, I love you. And in that moment, I realized that, wow, like, he rejected me. And, well, actually, I didn't realize it in that moment. I realized it after I got saved. But looking back, it's like, wow, like, 
rejection and chasing after people and pleasing people and trying to get their attention and trying to get them to love me. Um, that's another thing that I dealt with in my childhood and growing up was rejection. So that relationship came and left and then I started dating this one guy and we were in this on and off toxic relationship for two years where um, basically I gave myself to him and he took that to his advantage where we would all we did was have sex and it was so unhealthy I didn't even see how unhealthy this relationship was because like I said I didn't know myself I didn't know my worth I didn't have that relationship with my father to know what it's like to have a healthy relationship with a man so it was a lot of um, sex and a lot of arguing if we weren't arguing then we were having sex if we weren't having sex then we were arguing um, now I'm not gonna say it was just all bad there were some good moments but it's even hard to find those good moments because it's very um, shadowed by all the bad things that happened in the relationship so but of course I was seeing the same patterns where I was chasing after him I was begging for his love um, when things would go wrong like I said we were always arguing I would always be trying to chase and fix and you know look for the potential and hope that things would get better and I thought us having sex was things getting better and <laughs> So, um, eventually I got tired. I got just tired of being feeling used and taken advantage of by this young man that I won't speak of his name. But I realized, like, I'm worth more than just having sex. I'm worth more than being viewed as an object. I'm worth more than being treated like trash. You know what I'm saying? Like, girl, you can't get upset dating trash and they treat you like trash, honey. Like, what? So yeah, like I finally had ended that relationship after two long years. Like, and I didn't know God at that time. So had I known God and I was heeding to his spirit and his voice and he was telling me to get out, um, eventually I would have gotten out with God telling me. But it was like God had to force me out of that relationship based off the crazy things that were happening. I was single for a month, but I wasn't even really single when you think about it like okay well yes technically in a spiritual sense i was single but in a worldly sense i was still talking to several different guys on my phone and then one out of the maybe five six guys that were on my phone happened to be a guy that i kind of liked a little bit more and was really nice to me now mind you um i'm in college at this point i actually got saved at this point but I didn't really understand Jesus. I didn't really understand the whole cross and why he died for our sins. I didn't understand his love. I didn't understand what it actually meant to be a Christian. I just thought, oh, okay, you know, you just say I'm saved and you're saved. No, honey, there's work. And I actually was doing that work, but like I said, I didn't understand, so I fell off. And I was falling, I had fallen off for about a year and a half. Um, at this point, I was at Texas State. I was a freshman there, and I was going through my ups and downs and my issues with the first guy I was talking about, and myself, and with friends, and just depression, and feeling like, God, why am I here? I don't understand. And I was like, I need to leave this place. So I left and ended up transferring to a different university. And got worse <laughs> it got worse there so i'm trying i'm trying I, I backtracked i'm trying to catch y'all up to how i ended up in the second relationship that i'm about to talk about but yeah so i ended up transferring to another university and i thought you know leaving would be um like just a new place i needed to just be in a new environment i thought leaving texas state and leaving my previous university would i would be leaving my problems but Honey, no, when you leave somewhere, your problems come with you, okay? So, I got to this new university, and I hated it. Like, I thought before I got there that I was going to enjoy it, but I hated it. It was the worst experience for me, specifically my first semester there. Um, the roommates I had were terrible. I'm not even going to lie. Like, I wish the best for them. I hope they're doing well now. But at that time, they were trying to bully me. 
and I didn't realize it because I had I still had that people pleasing spirit in me. I still want I wanted to make everybody happy. I wanted to make sure everybody was comfortable before I was. So they treated me like I don't even know how to <laughs> describe the words, but they would taunt me, say things about me, they would do sneaky and devious things and then try to flip it and I eventually saw it, but I wouldn't say nothing. I've said things. I said something maybe to them maybe once or twice. But then I got tired and I was like, uh-uh. And I ended up fighting one of my roommates. And I ended up, I ended up, I, me, I went to jail, right? After all that that they did to me, that semester I was there. And I retaliated by violence. I got in trouble. I was the one that got arrested. Um, but that's a whole different story for another day. But even in that time period, I was like, okay, God. Like, when I was in jail, I was like, I need to, I just, I need you. I can't live like this no more. So that's when I, like, kind of rededicated my life. Okay, so now that I've caught y'all back up, so this relationship actually happened about a month before getting ar arrested. So I met this dude, and I'm sorry, y'all. I met this dude and he was so nice to me y'all like I had never had a nice guy or I have never had a dude treat me nice and he would take me out and it's crazy because I remember breaking up with my first boyfriend or the first long-term relationship boyfriend that I was with I remember breaking up with him and sending this long letter saying uh this wasn't a real like relationship a real guy that really loved me would have taken me out he would have done this and then that because my ex never took me out like i said all we did was argue and have sex like we didn't do nothing else he never took me out we didn't go on dates we didn't do nothing fun though we did have good times we never really had a it wasn't like a real it was really just he was like a sex buddy i'm not even gonna lie as nasty as that sounds but you know there is there's power in sharing your truth so, um, but this dude was actually taking me out. He took me out to dinner. He would take me to Six Flags and we would do fun things together. And I was like, oh yeah, this is it. Like, this is the one, right? And at this time I had actually rededicated my life, but I still didn't have that understanding of God. I didn't really have that full um, knowledge of equally yoked relationships and how just because he's Christian doesn't mean he's the one for you, right? So, but of course I knew like you needed to be with someone who believed in God. So I made sure to ask that question. I was like, hey, do you believe in God? Are you Christian? He said, yeah, I was like, okay, boom, that's a bet. It's the husband. <laughs> and um, nah, I was sadly mistaken. And, but basically the whole relationship was the first year, at least, was me, like, kind of pulling him and dragging him, like, seeing that potential, like, oh, okay, yeah, God, you know, God's in this relationship, we just got to work on his skills a little bit, you know, it's okay if I have to text him every week to come to Bible study and come to church, you know, as long as he's coming, like, I'm thinking, like, okay, we got this, we can do this. I was really spiritually high. This was, like, summer of 2016, like, just on the spiritual high, like, yes god and i was with this dude and he was still treating me nice still taking me out still doing all the nice things but that relationship with god was not there i did not see it and it's crazy because i think three months into that relationship god told me to break up with him but i didn't i was like no god he's nice this is the one like we can work on his relationship with god like it's there like he says that just because he tells you he has a relationship with god does not mean he has one honey like i really just wish i could just go back in time and smack myself upside the head and be like girl this ain't it you gotta break up with him but of course i didn't listen and i was like no god we can do this we can we can figure it out so that whole first year, I just, now that I'm looking back, I noticed I was just dragging him to church. I, it was like I was pulling more weight. I was pulling more weight in the relationship when it came to our spiritual life, right? Then 2017, so that was 2016, because we were together for two years, almost two years. 2017, it was like, if you compare those two years of our relationship, it was like a complete, like, it's polar opposite. 
So at this point now, I just kind of fallen away from the faith. I still believe in God, but I wasn't doing the work that I was supposed to do that God had called me to do. I'm still trying to entertain this relationship. At this point, me and this dude are having a lot of issues and it's crazy because we'll talk about the issue. We wouldn't even really talk about it. I would talk about it and he would say, okay, I understand, I'm sorry, and then we'll move on. But we hadn't really dealt with the issues in our relationships or in our relationship. So we were having a lot of communication problems, a lot of um, him saying he would do something but not do it. And his relationship with God, with God, again, was not there. Like it was just like, so because he felt like he wasn't in the faith, it's easy to fall off the faith. That's why it's so important to make sure that the person that you're with is actually, like, actually has a relationship with God, is actually spending time with God, actually in the Word, going to Bible study, going to church without you having to tell them or remind them. And I felt like that was my, like that was what I was doing in that relationship, was having to tell him constantly. And if I didn't tell him, girl, you would not see him in church. You would not see him in his Word. You would not see him praying. I felt like I was leading us. So in 2017, it was just like, bruh, <laughs> I just kind of like fell off the faith, just kind of was like, okay, you know what? Like, I really like this dude. I really want to be with him. And it got to the point where I love this dude more I love more than I love God. And that's a really dangerous place to be at because then you start, you know, following your flesh and not following the spirit. So... <sighs> That whole entire year was just a mess. I was hearing it every day. Like, even though I wasn't walking with God the way I should have, I was still hearing God. And that's the good thing about God. Like, he still speaks to you, you know, even if you're not walking with him, even though you're not living the full faith life. I still heard him, and he was telling me every day, break up with him, break up with him, break up with him. But I loved him so much. It's so hard to do. If I would have just listened three months in, last, or in 2016, it wouldn't been had it would have been so difficult but because i still kept on and still try to hope and pray that he will get to the faith so um one day in october <laughs> um we were having a lot of issues in september and it was really bad like the issues like we were bigger like it was so bad we were I had never fought like this in a relationship before like I know in my first relationship it was arguing sex arguing but that was normal right in that relationship this wasn't normal the arguing was not normal in this relationship so then I had a friend pass away and she was a really good friend of mine in middle school actually and thank God she knew the Lord so I know where she went but I decided to come back into town because I was at school at the time in Lubbock. And I decided to come back into town to go to her funeral. But at this point, you know, me and this guy that I was with were having so many issues that I actually checked through his social media and I found some stuff. Like something in my spirit told me to log into his Snapchat. And when I tell you, I found so many... <laughs> females on his snap like you can scroll and it was so uh, so i was like okay i'm gonna go you know pay my respects to my friend that has passed away but i i, I ooh, but i need to go and deal with the situation with this with my ex at now he's my ex but with my boyfriend at the time so i went to the funeral and paid my respects and then it was that feeling like, okay, this is the moment we're going to confront him. He doesn't even know. At this point, we hadn't talked in a week. Like, he's ignoring me. He's doing all this stuff. And I'm over here trying to chase back for his love. And at this point, I'm just like, you know what? I have to confront him. So it's like 3 o'clock in the morning. I can't sleep. This is all after the funeral, by the way. Um, I can't sleep. I'm just like, I don't know what I'm going to say. I don't know such and such what I'm going to do. And... I just had to log back into Snapchat again and he's having a current conversation with this girl. So, you know, I'm doing the whole, he has a girlfriend, blah, 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 but you can have him. The girl's like, oh, wow, I didn't know. So me and her ended up exchanging phone numbers and um, 
is, should I be sharing this part? Like, I feel like I should just kind of get to the whole spiel. Okay, so basically, he cheated on me, okay? Like, this dude cheated on me. This is a story for another day. I don't want to just go into full details about what happened, but basically, I walked in on him. He was in bed with another girl. This nice guy, this nice guy that I thought was the one, that I thought I was going to marry, that I thought God was in this relationship, well, I knew God wasn't in it, honestly. Deep down, I knew God was in it, but I was trying to make this facade, make this um, show that God was in our relationship. And then, um, so I come cheat on me. Pain was so unbearable, but eventually I knew, like, I needed to go back to God. I needed to surrender my life back to Him because being with that dude literally took me off the path like distracted me from what god was calling me to do so now it's january y'all that was in october i kind of ignored god for like a month or two because i was so upset so brokenhearted like i was like god why would you do this to me like why did you allow me to date this dude i'm like God was like, I ain't never asked you to hop into that relationship in the first place. I never told you, gave you the okay to be with this guy. You chose. It was your step. It wasn't a God step. It was a me, a self step. You know what I'm saying? And even in that, God showed grace and was like, you okay? I'm going to go ahead and let you be with him. But you're going to have to leave. <laughs> he asked me three months into the relationship, I need you to break up with this dude. And I did not listen. So... You know, God would do what he has to do to get you back in line with him. And it took my ex cheating on me. So after that relationship, I was like, you know what? I can't do this no more. So I finally, in January, fully, like, this is me fully, like, fully, fully, fully surrendering myself to God, to Jesus Christ. Because... I can't do this. All the mistakes that I've made, all the things I've thought about myself growing up, all the ways I moved were self-led and not God-led. And I realized that I had never heed to the Spirit. I never listened to God speaking to me. Even though I, I hear Him, I would never obey Him. There's a difference between hearing God and actually obeying Him and doing what He says. And for that first three years of my college career when I've been saved, I was just hearing God and not actually walking with him and obeying him and doing what he was calling me to do. So I was like, you know what, God, I give up. I fully give myself to you. And I can tell you guys that I am so grateful for finally surrendering my full self now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying my walk with God has been perfect since January. There have been some falls, some mistakes, but God always, I always pick myself back up. I don't ever try to stay down like I used to. I would get depressed and stay depressed. I would get hurt and stay hurt. I would get rejected and feel and stay in that rejection. And it's like, no, like God did not call me to stay in rejection. God did not call me to stay in low self-worth or low self-confidence. And God did not call me to be in people bondage. God did not call me to be a people pleaser. God did not call me to be, you know, doing things that I should not be doing. Hopping into relationships that do not serve God. Becoming friends with people that are leading me astray from God's path. You know, and it's like, God can sit here and tell you, but until you actually follow and obey is when I feel like you're really a true Christian. And I felt like this whole entire time, like, I wasn't really being a Christian. You know what I'm saying? Like, God would tell me to love on somebody, but yet I'm still being mean. I'm still being ugly. I'm still acting this sort of way. And it's like, no, like, you can sit here and say you Christian all you want, but it's when you start actually living out the gospel, when you start living out what Jesus came on earth to do. So, um, but yeah, guys, that's basically my story, my testimony. Um, I've been fully doing this thing for I'm trying to figure out how long 24, 15, 16, 17, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40
15, 16, 17, 18. So for four years now in October would be um, four years getting saved. But I would say I've been fully walking with God since January. Like for real, for real. Of 2018. And because um, I'm tired of the roller coaster. I'm tired of the falling off and doing my own thing. And, and I'm not saying it's going to be perfect. But actually coming back whenever you fall. Actually saying, okay, God, forgive me. I repent. Like, let's get back on track. That's kind of where I've been in my walk now. And I love that I'm able to, like, come back to God instead of just staying down or disobeying and being like, no, I can't come back. Um, so, yeah, that's really my story. Um, I can really sit here and talk all day, but uh, it's kind of, the video's kind of getting long. So, I don't know how long y'all trying to sit here and listen to me talk. But um, I do want to say that I just thank God. It's literally all God. I thank him for giving me a chance, giving me s several chances, honey. Several million of chances. Mm -hmm. Several chances. But, um, yeah, like, I don't know what else to say. I feel like I'm trying to just drag this on. But I hope this story, this testimony touched somebody. Um, I hope that I'm able to reach many people excuse me let me fix that i hope god is able to reach many people through me with my testimony with my story um and i apologize again if my story kind of just seemed all over the place and seemed kind of like Ugh. um i literally just woke up and was like i i gotta do this i gotta go ahead and share my, my story and i may be able to share my story in a more cleaner um more precise cleaned up organized way later on life but i was like let me just go ahead and do it right now and just get it out there so that's my story. <laughs> um, if you guys have any questions, any comments, any concerns, anything you'd like to say, you can definitely leave a comment below. Um, hopefully it's out of love. I know I'll probably have some naysayers and negative people on there, but it's okay because you don't have to pay attention to that. Um, I just pray that I can continue this walk. I pray that I can continue to go back to God even when I fall. I pray that um, God continues to speak to me and I continue to obey him. That's the thing is continue to walk this thing with him. Um, so yeah guys, I hope you all enjoyed and have a blessed day. Bye y'all.